Hello there, welcome to another unlockyoursound.com tutorial with myself Chris Cavalio. In this tutorial, I want to show you the difference between post pan, post fader, and pre fader sends in Logic Pro 10. So here we are. Um, in this project here, I'm just going to close the editor. All I've got is a simple chord. Cool. And um, in the context of making something fairly dubby, um, I'm going to need a tape delay on that. So that's what I'm going to use the send for in this tutorial. Um, so here, over in my track inspector, I'm going to click on send, go to bus and bus one. Uh, what's cool is when I do that, logic shows me the auxiliary that that bus is going to just to the right hand side of the track that I'm using, which is handy. So I can click on audio effects and I can go to delay, tape delay, and uh, just choose a preset of my preference. Cool. And now I'm just going to whack up the amount of that send. Great. So what's happened is the audio coming out of the synth is getting split. Um, obviously the dry version if you like is just going down the track down the channel strip as usual out to the stereo out and then a copy of that a parallel copy of that is going out as a send to auxiliary one which i'm going to rename here which uh, provides as a wet signal after it comes out of the tape delay great now Right now, I have that set to post pan, okay? Which means that if I pan this hard left, the wet signal is also panned hard left. What that means is this send happens after the pan in the signal flow. It's also happening after the fader in the signal flow. Okay, so the audio is coming out of retro synth, passes through the pan pot, passes through the gain or the fader if you like, and then it, that send goes to, um, the result goes to the auxiliary that the tape delay is on. So for example, if I brought the fader all the way down, I don't hear anything because again, when you are using post pan, it's also post fader. Okay, so post pan is post fader as well, which means that um, the send happens after the panning and after the fader adjustment on the on, on the audio. Now, if I change this, if I change this to uh, post fader, okay, let's see what the difference is now. Okay, no difference as of yet, because again, the fader is still all the way down. We've only changed this to uh, post fader at this point in time. Okay, so I'd still have to whack this all the way back up. So I'm gonna bring that back up to zero, but there will be one difference. Okay, I'm not sure what you might have noticed there, but what I noticed was that the dry version came out on my left ear, well, came through my left ear rather, and um, but the wet version, the delay version, was still kind of in the center. What that means is, now that we're on post fader, okay, it's post fader, but it's pre pan, okay. So um, it's not affected by the pan adjustment that I made because it's being sent to the delay um, before the pan adjustment, so it hasn't made its way to the pan adjustment. So I'm getting full left and right signal, full stereo signal through to the tape delay. Okay, but it's still affected by the fader. So if I brought the fader all the way down, nothing comes through at all. Okay, but if I change this now to pre-fader, and bear in mind that I'm still all the way left here, and I'm still all the way down on here, on my fader. What's being sent to the tape delay or to the auxiliary that the tape delay is on is completely independent of the pan setting and of the fader setting. So they're completely independent now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up those options just so that we can 
revise that. So post fader. Okay, so nothing happened at all because it's post fader. So that send happened after the fader adjustment. But if I brought that back up to zero, let's see what the difference is now. Okay, so it's post fader, but it's also pre pan, which you can hear because the dry version came out of my left ear, but the, the wet version is still in the center of the stereo field. Okay, now if I adjusted that to uh, post pan, because the send is happening post or after pan, um, only left stuff is getting sent to the tape delay. Okay, and obviously at this point as well, if I put the fader all the way down, there you go, nothing, nothing gets gets through to the send basically. So I hope that helps guys. Um, basically when you when you do use pre-fader, which is one I use fairly often, okay, it means that what gets through to what, what gets sent to the auxiliary is independent of any adjustment that you make here in terms of pan and uh, volume. Okay, so even though uh, I panned hard left and my fader was all the way down. It didn't matter because the send in terms of the signal flow, you know, that copy is made before the pan and before the fader. What that means now as well is if I go to my mixer, and I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna call this uh, chord. What I effectively have is a dry fader and a wet fader. So if I brought my dry fader all the way up, my chord itself, and brought the fader, brought the delay all the way down. Okay. This would be normal, even in um, a post fader scenario, but this wouldn't. So if I brought, all, brought this all the way down. And still played it through, it still makes its way through. But if we were in a you know post fader scenario, no signal would make it to the auxiliary because it would be uh, minus infinity. Okay, so hope that helps guys. Let me know if you have any questions or, or concerns about that whatsoever. Take care.